G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our Backyard Farm and Aquaponics YouTube channel. Today's clip will be on the aquaponics. Uh, we harvested a number of fish out of one of the tanks this week, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at those guys towards the end of the clip. And to begin with, I thought I'd run through a couple of plans that Bianca and I have got for the system. Um, we're thinking about modifying it uh, quite substantially, so we'll, I'll fill you in on those as we go. And I'll also give you a look at the plants, of course. And I need to keep an eye on the sump tank because I'm actually topping it up at the moment. So let's get cracking. So I put the bell siphons back together and had a bit of a sit down while the shower passed. So we'll get into the plant side of things now. The oregano or oregano, depending on where you live, is looking a little bit yellow. I think that and a few other issues we're having with some other plants could be due to the elevated salt in the system. I'll put a little bit of a link up there for you folks who haven't seen the last update on the aquaponics. Uh, we basically had a bacterial infection in the fish and I was treating it with salt. I bumped the levels up to around about six parts per thousand or six grams a litre. So yeah, that uh, just helps the slime coat of the fish, which is a bit of a protection against bacteria and fungal infection. We did lose a couple of fish, but the ones that remained are looking a little bit better, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah, so some of the plants aren't looking too crash hot. Uh, the oregano to begin with, and also the um, cucumbers. Uh, the cucumbers have been battling a few different things. Uh, a bit of mottling in the leaves, I think could be due to salt from what I've read and also a little bit of powdery mildew creeping in because we've had a pretty moist week so far. But we've also had a problem with the um, leaf roll caterpillar on these guys as well. I caught a couple of these caterpillars munching on a baby cucumber yesterday when I was shooting a clip for Patreon. And a while back I caught one in a semi-mature fruit. So they definitely do like the cucumbers. I've been just coming down every morning and going over the leaves. Any that I find, I've just been squishing them on there. Um, but yeah, as for production wise, these guys here are giving us, I don't know, two to three cucumbers every three or four days. So not a bumper crop, but from one plant, can't really complain. By the way, these guys are called the Cute Cumber. That's their marketing name. Um, I take it they're a parthenogenic uh, or self-fertile fruit, uh, fruiting vine, because we never see any male flowers on there, only the females. So yeah, it's, it's doing so-so. I do think if the salt wasn't in the system, it may be doing a little bit better. Um, things like the mushroom herb, it doesn't seem to have affected this at all. It's gone gangbusters. We're actually eating around uh, things like the bell siphons here, so we have access to them. And I took a couple of branches off from over the top of this little area where I planted out some cucumber seeds. I just popped those guys in cotton wool and they don't look like they germinated too well. Their um, sister plant over here, I accidentally dropped the seed while I was popping them in the cotton wool. And it germinated really quickly and is looking a lot healthier. Um, other plants, the rosemary looks to be handling the um, salt level fine. The Oenoch has always had a bit of mottling on the leaves. Uh, the beetroot, uh, it started to look a little bit mottled straight away. And I'm fairly sure it's not nitrate because we've got 40 parts per million in there at the moment. Uh, the chelated iron's been kept up to the system and so has the, um, the kelp powder. I've been adding that in and it's got a lot of micronutrients, up to 60 it claims on the bottle, including potassium. Uh, the Kangkong, yeah, it doesn't really look affected at all, does it? So I think it's a little bit more to salt tolerant than a lot of plants. The one that I was told I would see a um, response from straight away was the strawberries. A couple of people have told me that these guys will start to die back around about three grams a litre or three parts per thousand. Um, but yeah, obviously not. We had some set flower not long after the salt was added and we've got some small fruit on there. Mind you, they're not looking the healthiest. We're getting a bit of a brown tinge around the outside. So I dare say that's part, um, partly due to the salt. And I have noticed that some of the older leaves died back pretty quickly uh, once it was added as well. Uh, the thyme, it looks slightly affected, but I've also read that it's fairly salt tolerant. So it be interesting to see what happens with that one. Uh, things like the basil though, it's fine. The turmeric's fine. Um, haven't had any issues with that. The ginger looks to be going okay. As far as salt's concerned, however, I don't think it's liking this shaded position. Uh, if you saw our clip from last year's ginger harvest, I'll pop a little link up there if you haven't. Um, we got an absolutely bumper aquaponic crop, but unfortunately the neighbor's tree grew back a little bit too well and has shaded this corner out. 
Um, I like my ginger to get a little bit of shade, but yeah, that's just ridiculous. So I've spoke to the neighbor when they were out here lopping another tree the other day. And um, yeah, Bob's agreed that he'll let me jump the fence and we'll all get into that tree and just cut it back to give a little bit more sunlight to the aquaponics. It's great having top neighbors like that. Um, so yeah, the plant side of things, yeah, so-so, partly to due, due to the salt, I think. But on the whole, it's looking rather green. Oh, as for what we're harvesting, uh, obviously the cucumbers, the mushroom herb, and we're hooking into the sage, the basil, the oregano, as we need it. This Brazilian spinach is also proving to be fairly salt resilient, so we've been adding that to um, salads. So yeah, overall, fairly happy with the way it's going. As for the fish side of things, as I said, I'm planning on making a um, couple of changes to this system. Uh, first of all, though, I'd like to attend Ryan Chatterson's College of Aquaponics. It's an online course. I figure I'll go and learn with someone who's made money out of the commercial side of things and has got years and years of experience in aquaculture and aquaponics. So he's got a uh, fairly impressive resume, so I'm going to do his course. Um, and once I've done that, or I've learnt enough, what I'd like to do is decouple this from the plant side of things. So basically we'll be running the plants as a hydroponic system and the fish side up here, the tanks with all the fabulous filters, that will be run as an aquaculture system. Now the basic premise behind a decoupled aquapont aquaponic system or integrated aquaculture system is that the fish generate the waste just like normal aquaponics but it travels around and round within the system the biofilter over here looks after all the nitrification needs and then you dump water from this system here into the hydroponic side now that gives you the beauty of flexibility it means we can have a lower ph on the plant side of things which is part of the reason i think i got my fish a little bit crook and a higher pH on the fish side of things. A lot of the commercial systems I've seen don't use media beds. They go straight with the deep water culture or NFT. I'm going to be sticking with the media beds mainly because there's a lot of money invested in there and they're a little bit too um, full on to move out. So for the time being, I will keep those guys online. But yeah, I've seen some really nice systems set up that just use the aquaculture side and then run straight into deep water culture beds and NFT tubes to use up the nutrients on the plant sides. Paul Van, the gentleman who sold me this from Earthen Group, he actually had it running as an integrated aquaculture system. So he had his grow beds separate to the fish and then was dumping water out into his earthen beds. It's something exciting, something I'm really looking forward to getting my teeth into, but it won't be happening until I learn a little bit more about it. Um, just having these sick fish has really pointed out that um, I'm not the expert some people think I am. I've never claimed to be myself and I want a little bit more technological know-how under my belt before I um, make such an advanced change to the system. On to the harvest. Through the week, uh, 22 fish came out of the system in total. Three from this tank here and 19 from this tank here. Um, on Wednesday, I actually noticed one of the fish in this tank here that I'd shown in the previous clip uh, was looking a little bit slow as he was moving through the water, so I netted him out. Um, his lesion had unfortunately got a little bit more infected, uh, a little bit of red swelling around the outside. But I dispatched him and buried him under the mango tree down the back. Um, after the tree loppers finished, because they interrupted me, I came back and took three more fish out. Uh, the aim was to take out the one that had the lesion on the tail, and on the third attempt I got him. And over in this tank here, I took out uh, another three fish. The idea was to get the two fish that were looking a little bit crook. One had a lesion and the other had a little bit of fin rot. Um, I managed to get the one with the fin rot, but after I'd taken three fish out, I gave up on the other one. Uh, later, when I dropped the camera into that tank, I noticed that his lesion has um, shrunk quite considerably. So I've decided to leave him in there because he definitely looks like he's on the mend. Um, as did the one with the fin rot, um, the lesion on the top of his fin had shrunk quite considerably as well. So Bianca and I had a bit of a chat about it and we decided that what we would do is depopulate this whole tank so we can get some jade perch in there in the near future. So I came back the next day and took 16 more fish out of there. Uh, just to let you know, I dispatched the fish with Ikijimi and then what I like to do is cut down through the top of the head to sever the spinal column to definitely make sure they're dead and that also aids in bleeding out the fish to give you a nicer flesh so i've been informed there was a couple in there with fin rot um, so they're ones that i'd missed when i dropped the camera down in there but the obvious um, 
defect I saw was one with a fairly bad scoliosis of the tail. So the weights of the fish, the average was 416 grams or around about um, 0.9 of a pound. The smallest fish out of all of them was 167 grams, uh, roughly around about 6 ounces. And the largest was 718 grams or 1.5 pounds. Not the best um, size fish for being in the system for two years or over two years now. Uh, and it is one of the reasons why I do want to go back with the jade perch. Um, I've had two batches come through the system here. Um, they grow fast, they grow to a nice size. So I think they'll be my fish of choice from now on. So all things considered, I'm pretty happy with the way the system's recovering from that little bacterial outbreak. Um, that last crook fish looks like he's doing a lot better now. So yeah, got to think of the fish. They really do need to come first in an aquaponic system. The plants, they can be replaced easily enough and by the look of it they're not too affected by the salt levels we have in there and over the coming weeks I might dump a little bit of water and replace it with fresh water we'll try and bring the salt content down to one gram a litre or one part per thousand so yeah I think it should bounce back fairly readily uh, once that's all done um, the course I'm really looking forward to hooking my teeth into this course uh, there's links in the description below to uh, both Ryan's web page and also the course page um, there are huge gaps in my knowledge I think I got most of the basics down Pat uh, the bacter bacterial outbreak may prove differently but yeah I think I got most of the basics down Pat and I would like to learn a lot more about you know efficient plumbing of systems um, you know flow rates of pipes uh, better use of pumps and that sort of things and also too he offers up information on koi and tilapia and i get asked about tilapia all the time so it would be great to learn a little bit more about those fellas we just can't grow them here in southeast queensland australia so i do hope you've enjoyed this little bit of an update on the system and the fish and having a bit of a look at the harvest if you'd like to see more of these aquaponic clips or other backyard farming clips land in your email inbox all you need to do is click on my little hairy mug down there and check the bell icon when it appears and you'll be sent an email every time i upload a clip there's a couple other clips there for you to suss out as well if you want to have a bit of a look i do hope you're all well and happy and your systems are booming and i'll catch you next clip cheers folks